This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Throughout history, the course of sports has been shaped by one thing, the fans. From the moments you never dreamed of. Abby has saved the USA's life in this World Cup. Paul, the runner, loose ball, it's good! Gonzaga, the flipper still fits. To the moments that still give you nightmares. Behind the band. Super Bowl! Brady has his fifth! Through the good and the bad, fans have helped change the games we watch and the players we love. They may not be the most logical people. You are a factory of sadness! I'll see you Sunday. But they know their teams better than anybody. They'll blow in the ninth! You may not always see them, but you know where to find them. After all, there's nothing quite like the view from the cheap seats. Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Grab a chair and enjoy all there is in The the Cheap cheap seats. Seats. Greetings and salutations. Good morning, good Friday morning to you. You're listening to the Cheap Seats here on Public House Radio. Uh, I'm Jake Holmes. I'm uh, I'm 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 here with Christian Heimel today. Uh, Matt, of course, he's has the week off. I'm filling in for him. Christian's filling in for me. But you can catch him always on Mondays as well as. Uh, listen to uh, to the Wednesday show, and of course Matt and I, uh, you know, we we man down Fridays. So um, also be sure to check out uh, publichousemedia.com, phmedia.com, along with Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, there's even a store on phmedia.com, which is really neat. So um, check out uh, some t-shirts, some coffee mugs, what have you. Um, Christian and I, we have a great show for you today. I think Christian, how are you this morning? Wonderful, pal. Good to be with you on this Friday. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we got a good show for you, talking uh, a lot about the NBA and NHL drafts. That uh, one uh, is just around the corner tonight. The other was last night. And, uh, you know, some surprises, but we'll be diving into the NBA draft here in just a few moments. So, um, But some quick headlines, as uh, we normally like to do on Fridays. Um, just real quick, you have a fired-up host today, so bear with me for the next hour. <laughs> uh, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, not big on the draft, but one thing that I did see last evening uh, that bothered me was the Jameis Winston suspension quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for allegedly uh, getting after his Uber driver. Uh, This is a guy that has had uh, numerous, numerous allegations against him. Um, And quite frankly, I've had enough. I've had enough of Jameis Winston. I don't know how you feel about it, Christian, but uh, this is this is enough. He was a troublemaker in college. He's not a good he's not a good person. And you know what? It's time for him to start being a leader on that team instead of being this whatever you call this thing. That's a quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now. I want to know what your opinions are about it, because I, if I keep talking, I might have a heart attack. <laughs> I, I honestly, uh, for the most part, kind of ignored Jameis Winston and forget about him, considering that the division that he's in, you've got Drew Brees, future Hall of Famer, Matt Ryan, future Hall of Famer, Cam Newton on his way to being a Hall of Famer, uh, it, it, all in his division. So to me, Jameis Winston is irrelevant in the world of the NFL. Um, he's had flashes of brilliance, um, very few of them, and I don't even know if you could call them brilliance. Um, but I, I just, you're right. He, he's more of an off the field dis- detractor than he is an on the field producer, and you can't have that in the NFL. I'm really surprised at how long the Buccaneers have stuck with him. I'm almost disappointed in how long the Buccaneers have stuck with him. 
um, especially when they've been in positions to draft better quarterbacks. Um, so it's going to be a little uh, strange to see how things happen here with this. Um, there are... Um, it's not sure yet when, how long his suspension is going to be. It's going to be based about uh, what happens with the legal decision. Um, but it could be right around three games is what it's looking at right now. It, but you're right. He's been in such so many problems throughout his career, all the way back at Florida State in 2012. It's just it, it's almost kind of done, you know, kind of boring. And, and here's what's going to happen. Ryan Fitzpatrick is their backup. He's going to be. He was two and one last year when Winston missed games with a shoulder injury. He's going to be better than uh, Winston this year, and this is going to be the wake up call. I think Tampa Bay needs to get rid of him. I've, I've just, I've just had it. I've had it with him, and uh, and and yeah. So I mean, um, I. It's just, it's, it's just appalling that this is more than one time that he's had an issue, um, issue with um, getting, you know, after women. In particular, uh, it's just yeah. it's it's unacceptable, and of course you have the public stealing the, the crab legs and stuff. It's just unacceptable, and I'm telling you, the Buccaneers, Jameis Winston, of course, but the Buccaneers, and I think um, really the the NFL with the product that they've shown with Jameis Jameis Winston should just be just be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, I, I don't expect Jameis Winston to finish this. If he finishes this season in a Buccaneers uniform, this is by far his last one. There, there's just going to be too many opportunities for the Bucks to go get somebody else, somebody worth having on their roster. And it's just it's it's just kind of at, at this point it's a waste of time. He hasn't produced what they were hoping for. He hasn't been what the Buccaneers have been wanting out of him. And it's just at this point he's too much of a headache to be worth uh to be worth it. You know, I mean you look at some of his numbers um over his career, he hasn't exactly been stellar. He's got, let's see, in his career, eleven thousand passing yards, sixty nine touchdowns, a career quarterback rating of 87 percent nothing nothing blows you away when you look at Jameis Winston on the field um, in his career I'm looking at this 45 games played 69 touchdowns 44 interceptions 19 fumbles completion percentage of 61 percent uh, I, I mean I don't really see an exciting the player that they were hoping for and I think um, I know it's this is going to be only his fourth season, but at some point you just got to cut the cord. No, I agree, and and really, um, one thing that uh, w- is pretty um, pretty extraordinary, unlike the play of Jameis Winston and the character of Jameis Winston, was uh, a particular matchup in the World Cup Ooh. today, uh, or sorry, just yesterday. I mean, sorry, yesterday. Um, Argentina drops, uh, oh. to, to loses to Croatia. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that, I, Christian. I, listen, th- this is one of, uh, I sat and watched this entire match. Um, I don't know why. I, I just had it on in the background at first, and then I got really into it at halftime when it was uh, still scoreless. But 3-0 Croatia over Argentina and Lionel Messi. Um, and, and what was amazing was Messi was almost a non-factor. I, I don't know if he touched the ball once in the second half. Croatia did a phenomenal job holding him off. The, uh, Argentine goalkeeper, who is a backup apparently, um, wasn't their starter heading into it. Their starter was injured, um, in training prior to the World Cup, said he would have been able to be there in time for the, uh, for the opening match, but they decided to not have him on the roster, so their, uh, their goalkeeper made a terrible mistake to allow the first goal, and then the next two were just uh, beautiful goals from Croatia, uh, which was phenomenal. And um, and it just really felt low, though as like Messi kind of gave up. Uh, I mean, you watch the body language afterwards; it seemed like Messi was done, was over it, because now they're in a spot they've got to sit and wait and get help to be able to advance to the knockout round. A team that was in the finals. The last time around, uh, the World Cup four years ago. So this was it was a lot of fun to watch. It was exciting. The referee was terrible. Uh, I'll say that straight up right now. He just lost all control of the game and it became very physical, very chippy late in the game, and that was unfortunate. But uh, oh man, Lionel Messi just put together a terrible effort, and the team looked the worst that it probably has ever ever been with Lionel Messi on the squad. 
Yeah, I mean, Argentina, I mean, is, uh, you know, really, I mean, granted, it's always been, you know, kind of the messy show. I mean, they've had really nice pieces as well um, with that. You know, I mean, of course, you don't just get um, you just don't get to the finals and lose to Germany in 2014 with right. just Lionel Messi, you know. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's really remarkable. Some, you know, the, the World Cup's been interesting this year. You know, there's been some big upsets, but I mean, really, I don't think any um, compared to the one that was just yesterday with um, with with Croatia. Croatia taking down uh, Argentina, but um, but yeah, I mean it's it's certainly extraordinary uh, that you know you have literally one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest soccer players of all time in Lionel Messi, who's never who's never won a World Cup. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 just pretty interesting. So, I, I jokingly um, but, tweeted out um, after the game. I jokingly tweeted out after the game is Lionel Messi the Mike Trout of soccer because he he's arguably going to be the greatest. He could be one of the greatest of all time. He's a generational talent, once in a lifetime player, and he's not going to have a single championship to his name. Exactly. I mean, no, that's a good. That's a really good point, Christian. I like that. I like that comparison because I mean. Mike Trout doesn't deserve this, you know. With, with, no, uh, you does know not. what's going on no, in, with the not. Angels. He doesn't deserve that, but um, but yeah, neither does Messi. I mean, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't deserve. Um, he doesn't deserve this failure, you know, from from his squad. But um, but yeah, I mean, with with that said, um, there was. One thing last evening that did happen, um, it was the NBA draft. We're going to be getting into that here in just a few minutes. Not too many surprises, at least one, two, uh, leading up into that was, uh, you know, those, those picks were leaked, but, um, we'll be right back, uh, after just a short break talking to you and breaking down, uh, last night's NBA draft. You're listening to Jake Holmes and Christian Heim on the cheap seats. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good here on Public House Media. I just want to thank you for listening to the following broadcast brought to you by Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope that you'll come check out my show, How to Write Good, the writing show that is not about writing. A new show of How to Write Good comes up every Wednesday, so don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of How to Write Good. Again, thanks for checking out the following broadcast. On Public House Media. I feel glorious, glorious. Got a chance to start again. I was born for this, born for this. It's who I am. I put up again. All right, welcome back to the Cheap Seats, this Friday morning edition. I'm Jake Holmes, along with Christian Heimel today. Uh, we're talking some NBA draft. Uh, is, obviously, last night was, uh, you know, the 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 diaper dandies coming into the coming in and joining the big boys. Uh, so uh, not too many surprises, at least within the top two. Those picks were pretty much leaked about two hours beforehand. DeAndre Ayton, the big center out of Arizona, he's staying within the state and joining the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Sacramento Kings land Marvin Bagley the third, uh, the big center from Duke. But the big men, they really dominated last night, eh? Yeah, five of the first seven, and it's kind of interesting talking to a lot of people leading up to uh, the draft. It, it was you're looking for this unicorn, um, you know, this Kristaps Porzingis, Giannis Antetokounmpo, um, the the next Anthony Davis, you know, Kevin Durant. These guys six ten, six nine, and above who can shoot from outside, who can defend on the perimeter, who can also handle the basketball. Um, and you've got a couple of those there. I mean, to me, Marvin Bagley is the best big guy out of all of these guys. I, I, I hate Duke, but I love Marvin Bagley. Jaron Jackson is another one. Mo Bamba has a lot of upside, a lot of potential. DeAndre Ayton, I know everybody thinks he's the best prospect. Uh, or He was one of the best and the best player and the unanimous number one pick for a lot of people, but... Um, still, there's just some some interesting pieces there uh, that you know they're talented players, most definitely. And today's NBA is a perimeter game, and when you can step outside and you have that ability, like these guys do, it's uh, the only one really out of the top 
you know, ten big men that were picked. Those five of the first seven uh, picks were big men. And of those five, the only one who really right now isn't that outside shooter is Mo Bamba. But some of the people that I've talked to um, think that the NBA is going to be easier for him than the Big Twelve was, and that's that's scary to think of. Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm 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 a big Chicago Bulls fan. Love them. You know, I've been love them my entire life, and uh, I was praying for Mo Bamba. I was praying for Mo Bamba. Somehow I heard beforehand that there was a potential for the Bulls to move up to number four, uh, move up to number four to grab, uh, you know, to um, trade with Memphis, you know, that they would figure something out. But um, I want to know what your opinion is because I'm not I'm not uh, too keen on I'm not too keen on it. What do you think of Wendell Carter Jr.? I I love Wendell Carter Jr. I thought I thought that if the Cavaliers wanted to keep LeBron James, they should draft Wendell Carter. I thought that would have been, I don't want to say the missing piece, but someone who is physically ready for the NBA right now. Someone who can shoot from outside. He's not great. I mean, 41% from three. Um, very good passer, intelligent player, and he's just physically ready for the NBA um, for him. And, and it's just... I love him. I think pairing him with Laurie Marketing is going to be great. Um, although I, I'll, I'll be honest, I thought the Bulls probably should have gone. You know, if he was there, he wasn't obviously, and I'll get into that in a moment because when we talk about the biggest reach of the night, um, it, Trey Young um, at five to the Mavericks uh, and eventually, event, essentially to three was insane to me. But um, I, I like Wendell Carter a lot for Duke, and I thought. Like I said, I thought that if the Cavs wanted to keep LeBron James, that he would have loved to have played with Wendell Carter. Okay, that no, thank you for making me feel a little bit better. <laughs> uh, yeah, last night, last night I was, I I was working and I was just checked on my phone and I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" <laughs> like he Mo Bamba was right there, but um, but Wendell, I mean, you know, sure, I mean, it's a, he's a he's a good he's I think he is going to be a good pairing with. With uh, Laurie Markin and, and and such, and I like the number two, twenty-two pick, Jalen Hutchinson as well. I like that pick. Yeah. They've been they've had their eye on him for a while, but um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about um the trade within the first five, uh, within the top oh, five. Oh my goodness! I, I we were talking about it off air a little bit, you and I yesterday, yeah. talking about the show uh, that somebody was probably gonna gonna reach for Trey Young. That's uh, ex- wow. exactly the words that we that we said. And uh, listen. It's one thing to draft him at number five. One thing to take him at number five. And if you're the Mavericks, you got to be, you know, happy with Trey Young. Okay, good. He makes he maybe makes sense there uh, for the Mavericks, even though Denny Smith Jr. has been so good for them this past year. But then you go and trade him to Atlanta, and I'm sitting there going, "Wait a minute." The Hawks had Luka Doncic, which by all accounts was the number one prospect in this entire draft. And you traded him to get Trey Young. What are you doing, Atlanta? Like, like you've got. Uh, listen, I love Trey Young. I think he's. I think he got a lot of bad flack heading into the draft, saying that he's too small, saying that he's not physically ready for the NBA. People were saying that he's not going to have the same green light that he did in college, which he's not. But the kid still led the nation in assists and scoring for the first time ever. That's never been done before, and this kid, Trey Young, did it. That being said, I do not think he's a top five draft pick. I thought he would have made a lot of sense in either Chicago or Cleveland. Um, but, oh my goodness, to, to go up, if you're the third team in the draft in Atlanta and you've got Luka Doncic and then you trade him away for Trey Young, the Mavericks got a freaking steal in this draft. It's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable yeah, that I, that happened. I, I, and future resources as yes, well. Yes, and a first-round uh, I mean, pick it, next year, right? It's just yeah, for next year, first-round pick in next year's draft. And you got to imagine neither one of those teams are going to be, you know, they they may be lottery teams next year. You know, I mean, of course, yeah. if there's conditions in there, I don't know, if, I don't know if any additional information's come out about that trade, or at least about that pick. But unbelievable! I was like, you know, Trey Young's a nice player. I'm with you completely on on Trey Young. By the way, I I like Trey Young. I thought that he got a bad rap in Oklahoma because the team stunk around the team him. The, the, the rest of the team was terrible. He's the only reason they got into the tournament, and really, 
Should yeah. they have gotten in the tournament? No. I mean, you know, but that's that that was a discussion for, you know, a few months ago. But yeah, I mean Luka Doncic, uh fantastic players. He's killing it overseas. Um I mean he really has shades and it's just funny how, you know, twenty years later uh, you know, you have separate Dirk Nowitzki and, yeah. and Luka Doncic. I mean, you know, comparisons could be made there. It, it, it's unbelievable. And now, like like I mentioned, Dennis Smith Jr. Um, for for the Mavericks, and now you've got his ability as uh, to move the basketball. And then Luka Doncic, Dirk Nowitzki can even handle the basketball. Wes Matthews, JJ Barea. Um, this Dallas team, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, especially not in that Western Conference. But this is a team now that is built like a mini Golden State. You know, you've got shooters, you've got outside presence, ball handlers, one through five. It's just, it's unbelievable to me that the Atlanta Hawks had that opportunity and said, eh, no thanks, we're good, and dealt him to the Dallas Mavericks. That was just absolutely insane to me. There were a couple of trades last night that really kind of, you know, blew my mind. I mean, there's... I'm looking at a couple of them here. The Phoenix Suns getting the 10th overall pick, Mikael Bridges, and sending Zaire Smith to the to the Sixers. So the Suns not only get DeAndre Ayton uh, at 6'10", but then they get Mikael Bridges at 6'7", uh, to pair with Josh Jackson, who is at 6'5", and can shoot the basketball. So the Suns made out pretty good. Uh, the Clippers trading Shea Gilgis-Alexander and the Charlotte Hornets. Basically, they flop picks. And so the Clippers get Shea Gilgis-Alexander. The Hornets get... Miles Bridges and two second round picks, and for my money, Miles Bridges is one of the most promising players in this draft. I agree. And, and Bridges is going to be a lot of fun there with Frank Kaminsky in Charlotte and uh, and Kemba Walker. If they don't trade Kemba Walker, who, who knows if they do that? Um, but then, yeah, I mean, again, the 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 Luka Doncic trade is is insane to me. Um, the Trailblazers in the second round. I know it's not nobody really cares about the second round stuff, but Kerry uh, they, they trade their thirty seventh pick. Uh, they get the 37th pick from Sacramento for two future second rounders. Same with Charlotte. They get a 34th pick, Devontae Graham, uh, for, uh, and trade their two future second round picks to Atlanta. So, uh, it, this is what's really weird about the NBA is that you get teams stockpiling draft picks like crazy for future years that you have no idea what it means for players that they aren't that huge on right now. And I, I just can't believe that this is going to baffle me for years, and, and who knows? It, it may get proven wrong right away. Luka Doncic could very well be an Andrea Bargnani or a Goran Dragic. Very easily. Could be. But this is unreal that you traded that. I can't believe the Hawks did that. I cannot believe it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm very surprised. And another thing that surprised me last night, um, and I want to get your take on this, uh, was were you su- just as surprised as I was that Michael Porter Jr. dropped number 14? No, not at all. Um, and, and I don't think he deserved to be there. I, I honestly don't think Michael Porter deserved to be drafted this year just because, listen, I, I understand how talented he was in high school. I understand the potential. Um, I understand that a lot of people had him ranked as the number one um, power forward in this draft. Uh, but this is a guy who played 53 minutes when uh, all last year as a freshman at Missouri because of a back injury that so many teams were shying away from from a long-term health standpoint. So I'm not surprised at all. I think he's very talented, but you don't want to invest that kind of first-round money, especially not top-10 money, lottery pick money, uh, on a kid who in a few years may be out of the league because of back injuries. No, and that's a good point. That's one thing that I thought. I thought that he may drop out of the top 10. Um, but just based on talent alone, I thought that, you know, with, with all the potential and the upside that he may have, I thought that maybe, you know, somebody, somebody in the late top 10 would, would, yeah. would, would I mean, go listen, for him. Maybe the Bulls. On potential, if we're drafting on potential, Mo Bamba and Trey Young should have been one too. Exactly. Yeah. On that. Good point. Um, you know, Michael Porter Jr. has certainly got some great potential. Um, I think Jaron Jackson Jr. and Marvin Bagley, and it, I'll be 100% honest with you, pure talent, ready to win right now, Jaron Jackson, Wendell Carter, Marvin Bagley, Miles Bridges, those four. Those are the four ready to win right now in the NBA type players. But potential-wise, I mean, Michael Porter definitely has that. But again, that injury, and you watched it last night, he kept falling and falling because there were teams talking about him going number four to Memphis. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, he's just you know 10 spots later. So, yeah, it was, and what? 
yeah, sorry. Go no, on. No, it was just really impressive to see guys like him drop and then guys like, you know, uh, Chandler Hutchinson from Boise State move up into the first round at 22nd. Um, guys like, um, uh, Dante DiVincenzo goes 17th to the Bucks. Yeah. Great shooter. I mean, he had a tremendous combine. Everybody was so excited about him. Um, a, a highest vertical ever recorded. Anthony Simmons, um, who did not play in college, by the way, the kid went to IMG Academy, went to a, went to a year of prep school and then went into the NBA draft after graduating from high school. Um, going 24th to the Trailblazers. The pick that I love, there are two picks here that I absolutely love and I kind of, I don't want to call them steals yet. But the Boston Celtics with Robert Williams, um, they get a guy, a true paint defender, um, and a high-flying ability down low, which they did not have in uh, Al Horford or um, Aaron Baines. So Robert Williams fills that void. But then, and this is weird for me to say growing up a Celtics fan, I love the Lakers pick at Mo Wagner. I love that pick at 25. I think he's such a talented kid, 7-footer out of Michigan, Good outside shooter, very much in that Dirk Nowitzki mold. Um, I thought he could have benefited from maybe another year in college, but what Mo Wagner does, what he, what that pick allows to have happen if you're the Lakers, is it gives you more trade bait uh, if you want to go try to get mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard. If, if you want to go and try to get Kawhi, now you have another piece to possibly do it. But it turns out, Jake, the Spurs may not want to trade Kawhi anymore. It's, it, it, yeah, seems, I mean, it seems as though that uh, when the Lakers called, so, uh, there, there's a league source that says when the Lakers called, they basically shut the door on us, which is kind of interesting now. Yeah, I mean, you you have you have some interesting comments about Kawhi Leonard later in the show. Um, I, I oh, know yeah. that we were talking a little <laughs> bit off air. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah, no, no, that's a good, that's a great point. Um, you know, do I mean ultimately, really, you're probably going to have one year. Where Kawhi is not a Laker. After next year, he'll probably go to LA. That's what he um, said. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's what he says. And I mean, people can change in a year, but, um, but yeah, are, are the Spurs going to force him out? I mean, you know, are they, are they going to, are they going to oblige? I, I don't know. Um, you know, if, if, if they do that or not, that's certainly going to be something interesting, um, to see within the next couple of weeks. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I know that, that you have, again, you have some really cool stuff on that, uh, yeah, later. I One mean, last, listen, he's One got last, $219 yeah. million dollars coming to him this year if he wants it. So five-year, yeah. $219 million thing. That's a, that's a lot of money. Yeah, tons. <laughs> yeah, That's a lot more than I have. And, sp- and speaking of which, uh, 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 and it, it revolves around um, a team that – this is just one last question. I want your input on the draft um, because last night when this was happening, I was, I was very intrigued. Uh, number 21, the Utah Jazz, everybody's favorite college athlete, mm-hmm. Grayson Allen, uh, out of Duke. Everybody knows the history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the Jazz picking Grayson Allen. Actually, as a matter of fact, I think that that might be the best fit for him. And I'll tell you why. Donovan Mitchell. I, I, yeah. I think Donovan Mitchell has his head completely. I think that kid is that Ricky man. Rubio. I it is a leader. I, I I love Donovan Mitchell. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the NBA. I really like him. What, what's your take on the great on Grayson Allen to Utah? Uh, it's a good fit for him. As I say that, sitting here in my "I hate Grayson Allen" T-shirt, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I, I listen. I was wearing I was wearing this T-shirt last night. Um, it's it's the old school "I hate Christian Leitner" shirt that has been crossed out and says JJ Redick, and that has been crossed out and now says Grayson Allen. So I'll find somebody else to put on there for next year. But um, I kept hearing rumors that he was going to go to the Celtics. And I'm like, please, dear God, no. Please, dear God, no. Um, but, it, yeah, he fits well in Utah there. But, I mean, again, it, this is a it's a it's a guard-heavy league. And that's now a really guard-heavy team with Donovan Mitchell and Ricky Rubio. Um, it, so I, I don't know where he fits in there. But, hey, good for him to, to be able to, to get past all the the negative comments that he had heading into his senior year. He didn't have a great senior year, um, but a 21st pick in the draft. That's awesome. Good for him. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, for next year, you're going to be able to cross out Grace now, and you're going to have a plethora of guys. They have four of the top oh, 10 sure. recruits. Uh, it might so, be I mean, Zion Williamson just because. Just because I I'm with you all the cool videos of him dunking online, but um but yeah I mean so uh, any any final comments on on the NBA draft anything that you picked up um up last night biggest ones for me I mean I don't 
I don't know. I don't understand the Colin Sexton pick for for the Cavaliers. I mean, it seemed as though Cleveland has given up on trying to hold on to LeBron James. Yeah. Um, I understand Colin Sexton and he have the same agent. I get that. Uh, I understand Sexton is a is a pretty good scorer. He wasn't a great passer at Alabama. Um, had a very good freshman year. I I think he kind of tried. He he rode what he did towards the end of the season in the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. Rode that to a top ten pick. Um, so good for him. I don't. I know he's he's tried to reach out to LeBron. He said let's. He said it in his post uh, draft interview last night. Let's do it. Um, but it's it just. It felt to me as though Cleveland gave up. They didn't even try to consult LeBron James. And if you're not going to try to consult the best player in the world on who he would want to play with when he's got an option to not play for you anymore, I don't know what you're doing. So I, I've got questions there. But at the same time. Um, it, it, it does kind of make sense in Dan Gilbert and, and how his mind works. <laughs> yeah, you're you're exactly right. You're exactly right on that. Yeah, that, that is intriguing. Colin Sexton, really nice player, but um, again, you know, I mean, doesn't I seem like worthy uh, of a top ten pick. I mean, I would have loved yeah. to have seen. Like I said, I would have loved to have seen Wendell Carter there. I think Trey Young would have been great. I would have I would have been floored and like stood up in the bar and applauded if they got Miles Bridges at number nine. Because that would have been, that's a kid built in the LeBron James style. So, Mm -hmm. but what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll tell you what Cleveland's probably going to do next year, and that is lose a lot if they don't keep LeBron James around. But yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, just a little bit on the NBA draft. That's a good poll question, I think. Something that we touched on a little bit earlier. Did the Atlanta Hawks botch Trey Young did they did they reach big time for Trey <laughs> Young what are your thoughts um I know we know what we think um right here as for Christian Heimel and I Jake Holmes we're gonna be we're gonna be talking a little bit about some bonkers baseball news uh here next segment but uh but yeah sure stay tuned uh you're listening to it all right here on the cheap seats This is Kim Meyer, the host of Choose to Rise here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Choose to Rise, where we talk about living with positive mindsets, how to increase our confidence, building our faith, and living out our life on purpose. A new show comes out via podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you want to catch the episode live instead, stop by Public House Media around 645 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Choose to Rise. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Sam Kirby, host of Cinema Stories here on Public House Media. Thank you for tuning in to the following broadcast here on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Cinema Stories, where we talk about movie and TV news and reviews, and maybe, just maybe, we'll learn a little something about ourselves. If not, then maybe I made you laugh a couple of times. I don't know. New episodes air bi-weekly on Tuesdays. Thanks again for checking out the totally spectacular following broadcast here on Public House Media. Hands up for your colors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cheap Seats right here on Public House Media. I'm Jake Holmes alongside Christian Heimall today. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Coyne, once again, he uh, is doing some great work um, with the church this week, um, but he will, he'll, he'll be back next week. But it's Christian and I today, um, and we thank you for what, coming back with us as we begin some baseball talk, some MLB baseball talk, some weird stuff going on. Um, that that <laughs> doesn't one put it. <laughs> yeah, one way to put it. You're right, um, and it and it has nothing to do with the Yankees crushing the ball. It has nothing to do with the Astros pitching. Uh, David Price cracking some Fortnite references um, when talking about uh, avoiding uh, pitching for A.J. Hinch in the All-Star game. What kind of stuff is that, Christian? What do you think I, about I that? I love it. I love, as a Red Sox fan, I kind of love it. Um, as a baseball fan, I mean, listen, I hate, I hate the All-Star game. I really do. I hate All-Star week in general. Like Outside of the home run derby, what's the point? 
Um, I, I, main reason I hate the All Star Game is because it's fan voting, and that's just the dumbest thing possible. You're basically voting for Homecoming King instead of actual guys who deserve to be there. But that's a rant for another day. Um, but I think this is hilarious. He, he told so Price told the uh, uh, told the Boston Herald. I feel like if he did uh, select me, it would just be to get me to throw an extra inning, and that would be a pretty pro move on his part. I'll come up with something. If I'm an all-star, so I won't have to pitch. I'll play a lot of Fortnite the night before, so I'll be down slash unavailable, which is great because this is the same guy who a couple weeks ago or or a month ago or so was diagnosed with carpal tunnel that he said was because of or that people speculated was because of how much he played video games. I think that's awesome. This is a professional (laughs) athlete using video games as an excuse to not do his job. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's not like, um, you know, you see on like social media a lot, like, you know, the younger players, like Juju Smith Schuster, oh, NFL yeah. player for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, always playing Fortnite. David Price has been around a while, which yeah. I, I just, I just think that that's really funny that, uh, you know, that he's, <laughs> that this is what's going on. I thought it AJ was great. Hinch. It is. It is. You're right. I I agree with you. I think that I think that it's great. And and here's the thing. What and to your point, I really like what you, I really like what you said about the All Star game. Is that these guys? I mean, it's the middle. Of, it's the middle of July. Uh, the mm-hmm. stretch runs coming up. I mean, we're pretty much yeah by that time halfway the halfway point of the season will be over. These guys are supposed to be at each other's throats, man. Yeah. You know, like like. You know, I get it. You know, it's like the NFL, like Pro Bowls after the season, NHLs right. in the middle of the season, NBA also. But you know, the thing is, is, like these guys aren't supposed to like each other. It's not supposed to be, you know, all sunshine and rainbows and all that between no. these guys. And and I think that this is a nice dynamic between, or not a nice dynamic, but an interesting dynamic between a great pitcher and uh, and a rival uh, yeah. manager. And I mean, and, and listen, like. Th- with the All-Star game, for young guys, it's great. For, for young guys, it's a fun thing to do. The first couple times, you know, it's a really exciting moment for these guys, especially if you're in the home run derby because it's all for the fans and whatnot. But David Price is in his 10th season right now in the majors. He's already getting up there in age. He's thrown a lot of innings already on that left arm. He's had some issues in the past. And I completely understand if he doesn't want to pitch just one inning in a meaningless contest um, when his team could realistically need that one inning in the playoffs. You know, and, and, and listen, this is it's one of the dumbest arguments in the world that like you don't want to pitch somebody or play somebody in a meaningless game in case they get hurt when they could get hurt walking out their door as we'll talk about here in a couple minutes. Um but it's it's just one of those things that like I understand it. I get it. At 32 years old, you don't want to when everybody else when literally 93 or 96% of baseball has four days off except for these 40 guys who are part of the all-star week have a couple days off to just relax you want that as a a 10-year veteran you want to have those days you don't want to be forced to travel to dc which granted dc is not that far from boston it's a five and a half hour trip but like or excuse me like like a six hour trip or whatever like it's you want those days off. You don't want to be pitching one inning just to get down there and potentially have your arm, you know, a little tired in the postseason. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, think of the think of the guys out west too. Like you know the the elder statement statesman of uh, you know the the American League, like like Felix Hernandez, you know, for mm-hmm. instance. You know, they go go all the way to D.C. for four days to pitch one inning. Now I, I'm with you. I'm with you there. I I think that it's a little bit monotonous, or actually very monotonous. That you know in the guys that make it are only pitching one in- inning. The guys that are playing in the field, you know, I mean, the, are only playing one inning as well. Yeah. And and you could tell, you can always tell the ones like the new, like the new brood. Uh, you know, yeah. like Aaron Judge last year was having the time of his life in the home run derby. Uh, but you know, David Ortiz is really the only you know ever um, you know veteran that you ever yeah. saw that was openly having a great all excited time, about you know, it. Yeah. Always excited, and that's just his so, personality. Like, but I mean, like you you look at some of these guys, like these young guys, like I, I, Bryce Harper is going to be there just because it's in D.C. You know, that's easy for him. You know, but I mean, for for young guys like a um, like uh, Ronald Acuna um, or a um, I'm trying to think of some other some other young younger guys uh, that are really going to enjoy it, it. It's great for them. Good for them. But for guys like a John Lester, guys like even a Max Scherzer, who's probably going to be uh, maybe even the starter for for the National League. That's that's not that exciting to them. Like, who cares? You know, they, they've been through it before. It's kind of ho hum, whatever. We're over it, kind of deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have you have 
how many Cy Youngs between, you know, in, in, in this game, you know, I mean, and it's, it's cool for the fans, but really when it comes down to it, I mean, what, what else does Max Scherzer or a Clayton Kershaw, for instance, have to do in their career other than win a world series, you know, to be recognized as great. So, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm completely with you. I think that, I think that it's, I think that it just is a little bit, uh, like I said, monotonous. I I just think that it's a little bit, um, monotonous and there's not really any, any point to David Price, uh, you know, pl- you know, playing and, uh, of course, uh, you know, Fortnite. Uh, I'm not a Fortnite player, but, uh, I, a lot of people I it might it be once. worth it. I haven't played it <laughs> once, but I'll tell you right now, if I could use like Grand Theft Auto or Madden as an excuse to not go to work, I, I would a hundred percent do that. A hundred percent. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I feel I, you, David. I feel you. Yes, yes, I I agree. I agree. GTA, is particularly San Andreas, I think that was. I one literally of the, just I finished that game like two weeks ago again. Played <laughs> it again because it's one of the greatest of all time. Literally. I agree, San Andreas, man. It was it was it's so good. I I definitely, uh, you know, of course, my mother listens to the show, but I mean, this was ten years ago. I definitely skipped school to play uh, San Andreas. Oh, so. I definitely, I definitely <laughs> pulled all nighters playing Halo when it first came out. You know. 15 years ago 100 percent. so uh one guy who's who's not going to be at the all-star game um and it's it's not because he's playing video games it's not because he's not good enough uh because i mean he probably is i don't know if he'll actually make the roster but um i don't think brandon morrow is going to be heading to dc for the all-star game um especially if this back spasm continues to linger uh, the cubs closer 16 saves on the year a 159 era that's good enough for an all-star appearance in my opinion um but he's been put on the 10-day disabled list earlier this week after back spasms from taking his pants off. Yeah, back spasms uh, from getting undressed in his closet at his home. And here's the best part. This is, this is the funniest thing in the world. This is his exact quote. Just undressing at my house, like 3 a.m. in the closet. Got my right leg off. Left one just felt like a spasm in my back. Okay, I don't think we needed to know the 3 a.m. part because that puts everybody's mind into a different spot. That you're you're getting undressed at 3 a.m. Where where have you been since then? But this has got to be one of the strangest, weirdest ways someone got hurt. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And and uh, you know nothing, and not to mention nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Let exactly. alone 3 a.m. You know, so um, so. I, I saw that. I got the update on my phone. I think it was yesterday. I think it, no, it wasn't yesterday. It wouldn't have been yesterday. It was Wednesday, I believe. I, I was. I was like, what? I, I had to do a tumble take, and I was like, Brandon Morrow. Like this isn't. This isn't a scrub. You know. I mean. You right. know. Like you said, awesome numbers on the year. He's got a one fifty nine ERA. You know, uh, playing really good baseball. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, this is, this is right up there with, with some of the craziest injuries that, that, that you've seen. I mean, e- exactly. Lionel like it's Simmons with a game boy. Um, my favorite one, like it was so funny. Like I was looking at this stuff and who was it? Oh my God. There was somebody, there was some hockey. Oh, D- Dustin Penner, Dustin Penner for the LA Kings had back spasms after he was literally about to eat breakfast. He's about to eat pancakes. In the in the morning, and just has a back spasm out of nowhere. Oh, Dustin Penner, yeah, that uh, that um Ridiculous. that career kind of kind of went downhill really quick. <laughs> he got traded, he got traded yeah. to L.A. and that was it. Yep, um, but yeah, I mean, this isn't this isn't you know talking about uh, you know Zambrano punching the the, the Gatorade jug yeah, or whatever you know Brown punching a wall. Yeah, this this isn't that. This is a dude that was changing his pants and. Hurt his back. I mean, that's that's something that uh, you know that that you'd hear like like your drunk dad doing or something. Yeah. <laughs> and no offense to Brandon Morrow, like the dude's what? How old is he? Thirty three. Uh, he's in his mid thirties. Yeah, thirty three. Yeah, he'll be thirty four. He'll be thirty four in July. Like, no offense, dude, but like, if you're getting back spasms taking off your pants, you you might need to think about retirement. Like, that's 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 a, that's old dude kind of stuff right there. Oh, I, oh no, com- completely, completely, we, you know, and, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, it's just amazing. I mean, what else, what else can you really say about it? Yeah. <laughs> 33 years bad. old, you're putting on your pants. I like, feel bad, but like, 
Like, dude, Brandon, come on, man. You're killing my fantasy team going on the disabled list here, bud. You were like my best closer <laughs> because Sean Doolittle's been awful, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know it. It is what it is. You take what you you take what you get. But um, but yeah, Brennan Morrow um headed to headed to the ten day DL. He's probably gonna miss uh the you know the All Star game uh, in Washington D.C. because of back spasms in result of changing well, his pants. Not. He may opt to not go because of that. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get you don't want to get hurt again. That would be even more embarrassing. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, oh man, that's just that's just funny. So, uh, th- this is why I love baseball. Baseball's strange. It's one of those things where you can you can never predict it. You never know what's going to happen with baseball. So it's what makes the sport so great. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to get into Jake. This is your world more so than it is mine. But the NHL draft is this weekend, um, and I know you're pumped and excited about it. So I'm going to need you to tell me who my New Jersey Devils are going to take to be able to do better than they did this year. Even though we do have the MVP in Taylor Hall, finally. In MVP. We'll touch on the NHL stuff and a whole bunch more, our bold predictions and whatnot coming up just a little bit. You're in the cheap seats on the Public House Media Network. Hi, this is Emily. This is Lindsay. And this is Elizabeth. Co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, we hope you'll come check out our show, Beauties and Headcanons, where we talk nerdy to you about fandoms, fan fiction, and all pop culture for nerds that you can think of. A new show comes out every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. How's it going, everybody? This is Keith. And Katie, host of Coffee with Keith and Katie here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. When you're done here, I hope you'll check out our show, Coffee with Keith and Katie. Where we talk about our lives and relationships over a cup of coffee. A new episode airs on Facebook Live every Monday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Coffee with Keith and Katie. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Okay, my friends, you are back in the cheap seats on Public House Media. I'm Jake Holmes with Chris Heimel. And we are about to talk about some NHL draft. It's crazy. It seems like it was just last week that the Washington Capitals were uh, hoisting the Stanley Cup. Oh, wait. It pretty much was last <laughs> week. Uh, quick turnaround in the NHL. Uh, uh, sorry to, to Max, one of our Wednesday hosts, but uh, it's, it's, it's a quick turnaround uh, when, <laughs> when you're celebrating. It, right? You never get it's, to enjoy it. It's so funny. I was I was following a couple of Caps players uh, and uh, and reporters and um, – whatnot on twitter and a couple of them were like wait a minute the draft is this week wow don't really get to celebrate when you're winning a championship do you <laughs> and i'm like wait 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 stop like you can't really start complaining that you don't have enough time to celebrate your first stand like alex ovechkin still hasn't woken up from his bender like let's be honest <laughs> like that dude is living his best life still i mean oh, um, man. but this is this is what i love about the nhl and the nba um, and look, both seasons I think are too long in my opinion. I would love to see them drop to maybe like 68 regular season games. Cause in my opinion, um, hockey playoffs should not be going until the middle of June. That's just not okay in my opinion. But, um, I love the fact that the draft is almost directly after the end of the playoffs because it just keeps everything going. It keeps it in momentum. It keeps it in the news cycle. It's not like baseball where the draft is hidden in the middle of the season. Like, cause the, the, the MLB draft was a week ago and nobody yeah. talked about it. And then the NFL draft is four months after the Super Bowl. And all we've got to do is basically dissect and, you know, rip apart these kids for three and a half months after a championship is won. I love the fact that the NHL and NBA do it so quickly afterwards. Yeah, I I agree, and and the thing is with with hockey, you know, I'm my my background's obviously in in, in hockey. Mm-hmm. I I love it because it, there's never a dull moment. You know, yeah. you, you have the draft. There's going to be a bunch of trades tomorrow. Uh, you know, sorry tonight. Um, there's going to be a bunch of trades tonight, even tomorrow and into the weekend. There there will be an insane amount of trades. Big names will be on the move, and uh, it's. And then free agency starts only a week after. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, 
I, I like the setup, and it's the same way with the NBA. I think that they're the ones that really do it right. The most boring part of it's really <laughs> the preseason. Yeah. Uh, it's not like football and shorts, like OTAs and stuff, where you're just trying to stay awake. This uh, the most boring part. They're playing hockey. So, but the, but the insane um, part is you get training camp in like three months. Like that's oh awesome. yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's very nice. You get it. You get enough time to get some camaraderie. All right. Uh, so, you know, so Jake, real quick, team. before we touch on the draft, because I know that you know you're gonna know this better than than me. Because listen, I like hockey. I really do. I, it's one of my favorite sports to go watch in person. Um, but I do not follow it to the extent that I wish I would to be able to know more about my favorite team. But um, let's just touch real quick on some of the awards that were handed out on Wednesday night because. You got some interesting ones there. Um, I shouldn't say interesting, but maybe a little surprising. I was actually shocked that Taylor Hall won the Hart Trophy. As a New Jersey Devils fan, I'm ecstatic. I can't believe it's a, the first ever Hart Trophy for the New Jersey Devils, considering how good they were in the late 90s and early 2000s. But I was actually a little surprised to see Taylor Hall win the Hart Trophy. Yeah, um, I, I have a question for you in, in return. Who, who, who'd, you, who'd you think would win it? I honestly thought it was going to be Nathan McKinnon. I, I really mm-hmm. did. Nathan McKinnon or, uh, truth be told, I, I mean, and this is the other part that's interesting. The Players Association voted Connor McDavid as the most valuable player. Um, uh, well, not the most valuable player technically, but the most outstanding player, uh, the Ted Lindsay. Yeah, the Ted Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. So if, if the players think Connor McDavid is the most outstanding, the writers think Taylor Hall, yet the writers think Connor McDavid was fifth. In the MVP voting, that to me is interesting, but I, I really thought it was going to be Nathan McKinnon. Um, I understand why it was Taylor Hall because of what he was able to do when the Devils, who started out great, were just really, really bad come December and then flipped a switch at the turn of the calendar year. Uh, and Taylor Hall did some amazing stuff, 19-game uh, point streak himself. But it, it was just a little surprising to me to see that happen because of some of the struggles that the Devils had throughout the year. I agree, and in uh, I'll I'll tell you I think um I think there's there's an interesting dynamic here because Connor McDavid's so good, but he, the team that he plays on stinks. Right, that team's terrible. And um, but the thing with Taylor Hall is he's he's playing, he plays on a on a really good team, but he was above and beyond their best player. And I yeah. if I had a vote for for the heart, I would have voted for Taylor Hall. I think they got it right. Uh, the Ted Lindsay, yeah, the most outstanding player in the NHL probably is Connor McDavid. They're 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 right about that. But the yeah. most valuable player last year was Taylor Hall. Where would the New Jersey Devils be if Taylor Hall wasn't yeah. on that team I mean, with his nineteen time, game winning streak? Mm-hmm. At the same time, you could say with Anze Kopitar with the Kings. You know, they they basically made the playoffs at the end because of him as well. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's just listen. It's it's great. I I love the fact that you know. Um, that the Devils finally have an MVP after finishing. Marty Brodeur finished third three times. And yeah, that's I know. the highest a Devil has ever finished in, in the Hart Trophy voting. How is that possible? I, who, like that, Ma- like when, Marty when you, Brodeur. Like, like how good, I, I, I get it. There's a separate, and listen, this debate could be had for years of if, like, if there's a specific trophy for your position, should you be allowed to win the overall MVP? Like Cy Young, if you should you be allowed to win the MVP if you're a pitcher? Should you be allowed to win the Hart Trophy if you're a goalie when they have the Vezina? But, I mean, the Devils didn't have any great scores on those teams. They just had tremendous defensemen, and obviously, and, and I'm biased as anything, the greatest goaltender of all time. But, you know, it's just amazing to think that it took till 2018, and a kid, Taylor Hall, who was a number one draft pick by the Oilers a couple of years ago, to be the first ever Devil to win the Hart. Oh my gosh. And I'll, I'll tell you to your point. I mean, I think with goaltenders, it's like a 1A, 1B, 1C scenario. I think wake up one morning, it's somebody else. It's, that's the best of all time. Marty yeah. Brodeur, of course, is in one of those three. He's been in, he's certainly in that conversation. Um, I mean, really the late nineties, you know, completely renovated goaltending. Marty, um, I mean, and, and, and Wah, right? Those, those are the absolutely, top three. Take, absolutely. Take pick, depending yeah, on where, take your pick. what area, where, who, where you grew up in the nineties, that's who you, who you think, you know, kind of. Exactly. Kind of Exactly. I mean, you're exactly right. And I think that it's I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think that it's a travesty that that Brodor didn't win it. I mean, he, yeah. he was I mean, he was he was, in my opinion, in a lot of those years, he was the best player in the NHL, so, you know, finished third when a couple times. To change the rules to prevent a goalie from being an offensive force. 
Exactly. That proves how dominant you are. And that is my that is always my argument whenever anybody tries to tell me that Marty isn't near the best of all time. They had to they had to institute the trapezoid to prevent Marty from being an offensive force. Like yeah. th- think about that. They had to change the rules so that your goalie wasn't an assist or goal scoring machine. Like that's that's weird. But yeah. Uh, yeah. other awards uh, uh, out there: Victor Hedman, the the Norris Trophy, Pecorine, the Vezina, uh, both well deserved there. Anze Kopitar, best defensive forward. Um, so I guess a little consolation prize. Uh, for for finishing third in the MV in the Hart Trophy voting, Matthew Barzal. I'm hoping I'm saying that right because I, yep. I don't follow the Islanders as rookie as the Calder Trophy, which good for um good for Lou Lamarillo, good for potentially Barry Trotz. Um, you know because we still don't 100 percent know there. Uh, but then I think the best one for me, the two really really good ones for me, and I don't know your thoughts on this. Obviously the the Golden Knights win G- GM and 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 Coach of the Year, but the Masterton Trophy. Uh, to Brian Boyle, who was diagnosed with cancer in, I want to say, June of last year, and then made it back in time for the home opener for the Devils. And, and as a cancer survivor, I can tell you how difficult that is to do, just to wake up every day. But to be able to wake up and be in hockey shape mm-hmm. three, four months after uh, you were diagnosed is just absolutely insane. And then the Willie O'Ree, the first ever uh, Willie O'Ree, inaugural Willie O'Ree Community Hero Award, uh, Darcy Haugen, the uh, the coach of the Humboldt Broncos, who uh, passed away in that terrible bus accident um, back in April. Uh, well done to to be able, for for those two to be recognized, and for the NHL to recognize those two. Yeah. Oh, I I definitely agree with you. And I mean, the Willie O'Ree that was the first Willie O'Ree, um, you know, award given. So you, I mean, not that you could ever compare. Um, not not that you could ever compare. You know, these these awards but um i mean it's just that it's just so trash i mean that that's still so tragic i mean like you ask any hockey player growing up um you know you have the most fun on the buses going to games in your junior league that's when you have the most fun and um you know i i i think about that crash and i you know i even get i even get choked up a little bit but um but yeah as far as as far as the masterton trophy excuse me um nobody with no nobody can be as deserving as that uh as brian boyle and brian boyle's a good dude too good dude um he, really, really good, good dude too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah and i mean it. he's one of those guys that you want in your locker room and it's just so it was just so unfortunate even you know uh you know with his, with his children being sick yeah. um as as well i mean that guy is something special and um i'm telling you family must be proud um but yeah nobody could be more deserving uh than brian boyle stud human being you're in the cheap seats here uh on public house media christian i will fill it in for matt coin jake holmes uh as always here on fridays uh and, and now as we get to the nhl draft which begins tonight uh and then rounds two and seven tomorrow um I don't know a lot about this stuff. I really don't follow the draft. So, Jake, I'm going to defer to you. It seems as though that number one, number two, take your pick, Rasmus Dahlin and Andre Svechnikov. Yeah, Svechnikov. Yeah, Svechnikov. Yes. Okay, Svechnikov. So, so to start, I just want to give you a little bit of lowdown on on what your Devils may do at seventeen. Yep. They're probably going to go defense. Uh, they're probably going to go okay. defense. I th- feel like that's what that's where their biggest need is. They're stacked down the middle, man. That's yeah. one of, that next year is going to be one of the best. Yep. They're going to be one of the best teams at center. Um, Listen, man, but, I had um, a choice this past year. I went to a Devils game, and I had a choice. Do, do, do I get Jesper Bratt? Do I get Nico Heischer? Or do I go uh, like a proven commodity um, and like a Corey Schneider or something like that? And I went I went Jesper because everybody else was wearing Nico stuff. So I went I, – I've, I've, I'm ready for the future. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Oh, man, it's yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I really like what the Devils are doing. Ray Shiro, former Penguin GM, mm-hmm. he really – he – he really broke the mold there too, because I mean they were kind of a, I mean you know before Crosby and Malkin they oh, were yeah. terrible, you know I mean it, it's, some of those teams in the early 2000s were just terrible, but um you know he's speed and finesse that's mm-hmm. something that's not that's not the norm in, in New Jersey so um my guess would be if he's there at 17 would be Bodie Wild um great skater um defenseman plays the right side um and uh, and yeah. Uh, you know, piece to add to a rebuilding defensive unit. Uh, I think Bodie Wild, obviously, um, 
if he's there and if they have the assets to trade up, I'm not sure if they do. Adam Boykvist, um, he's he's probably the top. He's my top defenseman uh, in this draft. Uh, just 19 years old, great speed and skill. He's a good offensive defenseman as well. Um, add a little bit more, um, you know, offensive ability to uh, the New Jersey Devils, who uh, are really ahead of schedule. That team is going to be very good. I. I want to see what they do in free agency because there's a little bit of cap space. They can improve the team right now as well as the future, really, this year. So it's an exciting time Should for you as, fun, as, a, yeah. as a Devils fan. Yeah, it's yeah. a really exciting time. But, but yeah, to your point, um, I mean, you have two generational talents in this draft. I mean, you're going to have a lot of good players. This is a good draft. Um, you have two generational players, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, who's going to go number one overall to the Buffalo Sabres. That's pretty much a formality. Uh, he was, he was the best player at the Olympics, uh, just in February of this year. Um, plays for Team Sweden. His crazy offensive talent. He's one of those guys. He's a, a Connor McDavid. He's one of those guys that's going to come in and help the team now. And he may, I don't think that he'd lead that team to the playoffs. But Buffalo is going to be significantly better because of Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, for Carolina, this is interesting because Andre Svechnikov is the number two um, best player in this draft. But I have a weird feeling they're not going to pick him. I have a weird feeling they're going to go with uh, Philip Zadina, who actually played with two of their top prospects um, in juniors. Uh, but Svechnikov, he's a right-handed power forward, really – Carolina hasn't had an opportunity to draft a guy like this since probably Eric Stahl uh, back in the stacked 03 draft. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as going down past those two, you have Philip Zadina, who's like, like I mentioned earlier, he's a, you know, he's fast left winger, really good 200 foot player. He's got a crazy mm -hmm. shot. Uh, Ottawa Senators, uh, you know, at number four. Boy, uh, the Ottawa Senators are a mess with the Eric Carlson and Mike Hoffman stuff right now. Yeah. But um, who knows what they're going to do with that number four pick. But, yeah, there's a lot of good players. I mean, really, one through eight, um, you finish, you know, you go have Noah Dobbs in here, um, Brady Kachuk, uh, the Hobie Baker winner uh, from last year from Boston University. You've got some really good players in this draft. It's going to be exciting. But really, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Christian. What's going to be even more interesting than who gets picked up uh, is going is it's going to be just as interesting to see who moves. Uh, you hear I'm hearing a lot of a lot of talk about uh, Jeff Skinner in Carolina, uh, Max Pacioretty in Montreal. Uh, L.A. Really? are really high on both of them. Yeah, and I think that that's mm. interesting because they just um, – they Montreal just dumped some salary in order to get Max Domi in exchange for Alex Galchenyuk. Uh, so I, I think that that's interesting, and I don't think that they're a team that really needs to rebuild. They were riddled with injury this year, and uh, they were just a year away – just a year removed from winning the Atlantic. So uh, I don't really know what – what Montreal is thinking, but uh, Mark Bergevin hasn't done a fantastic job in his tenure, uh, you know, as as GM of the Canadians. But uh, Phil Kessel's another one that's potentially on the move, and uh, you know, right winger for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So right there is three really big names in the NHL it that like are you're, uh, being flirted with. It sounds like you're ready to make a bold prediction for the week. I, you know what, I am, and. Okay. Uh, I am, and I, I think that I, I, I think that I alluded to it earlier. You know, speaking of the NHL draft and those top two players, I don't think Carolina is going to pick Andrei Svechnikov. Uh, I think that they're going to go with uh, Philip Zadina, a guy that has some familiarity with their, uh, with their, um, some of the players in their junior, you know, in their in their system. I'm going to say that they go with Zadina, and then Montreal cashes in with Svechnikov at three. All right, that's awesome. Um, well, we'll be w watching for that tonight. Obviously, I'm gonna go uh, for my bold prediction. For by the time this show airs next week, when you and Matt are back together talking about it, uh, I'm gonna go back to what we started off the show with with the NBA draft. Um, I've got twofold here. Number one, uh, by this point next week, LeBron James has to decide what he's doing. By the 29th, uh, he has to decide if he's gonna opt in with his 35.6 million or if, if he's gonna say no and become a free agent. 
I've been saying this for a long time, so if you've been listening to the cheap seats or if you've been listening to Press Row, um, it may not be that bold of a prediction, but I think LeBron James opts in and stays with the Cleveland Cavaliers Ooh. for one more year. That is my that is one. Number two, I think Kawhi Leonard by this point next week is wearing a Boston Celtics uniform. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because All I don't right. think I don't think the the Spurs are going to gift wrap potentially um, you know, a playoff spot to the Lakers, especially yeah. if they think Paul George and or LeBron James is coming to LA. The Spurs are not going to do that, and I think Boston has the young assets to actually make a trade work. So, yeah. who those assets are, I don't know if it's Kyrie and Jalen Brown, Kyrie and Terry Rozier. I don't, I don't know, but um, I don't. I hope it doesn't happen because I love the Celtics. Um, but uh, I just, I there's something about it that just makes me say Kawhi is a Celtic come this time next week. Man, okay, I like it. I'd love – you know what? I like the Celtics. I like what they're doing anyways. They're the real process in the NBA, yep. by the way, not Philadelphia. Uh, I really like that. I, I would like that. You know, add a little bit of a, a defensive uh, presence into that lineup. I would really like that. And I think – of course, I – how can you go against the Celtics for next year anyway? But exactly. but yeah, I like those picks, man. That's 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 some good stuff. Uh, some good stuff there. Probably mine will just go right down the tubes, and <laughs> Carolina will pick Andre okay. Svechnikov. You know, but um, but yeah. So Sam's gonna um, end up with me. LeBron's gonna end up in L.A. and Kawhi's gonna end up in L.A. So what does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, but yeah, that's everything for us for, uh, you know, this edition of the Cheap Seats, the Friday edition. I'm, I'm Jake again, uh, Christian filling in for Matt, but you can always catch Christian on the Monday show. Uh, we, we have Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays where we're giving you all of, uh, the best and, in in this case today, the most fun sports headlines uh, in all of professional sports. So um, as for Jake, Hol- as for uh, myself, Jake Holmes and uh, and Christian Heimel, thank you for tuning in today. And uh, we will see you next time on the Cheap Seats.